and gentlemen, welcome to the Red Rock Open Microphone. We appear here every Monday night at 7 o'clock, uh, courtesy of the Red Rock Coffee Company. Yeah. The open mic is free, but um, we ask that if you um, are so inclined that you buy a drink, and if you do so, please uh, tip them. Um, tonight's a little uh, interesting, because um, the other... The other host is not here tonight, so it's kind of me, and um, Steve here has been hosting this open mic for a very long time, 15 years or so, Steve? 15. So he's, he knows stuff, and he has a kind of a, kind of a tradition. He would, he would also always play um, a surprising song by a band, a weird band that few people have ever heard of called The Grateful Dead. So, is it a little quiet? All right, I'll turn it up. Okay. How's that? All right. So we are going to uh, open with that, and then I will play my own set, and then we'll get to the regular set like that. Hello. So, um... Some of you may know this song, and if you know the song and would like to sing along, uh, please do. If you um, don't know the song but would like to sing along, it's free country. Um, but in any case, uh, have a good time. I, I know I have a it's nice and martial way to come up here and play this. I wasn't planning to play this anymore. I played this every Monday for 15 years, but uh, one of the baristas.
poems out of a book um, I wrote, published last year. The book is called For the Love of Gravity. Thank you very much. Um, and it costs 10 bucks, and I have copies of it, if you'd like to uh, get one. But maybe you ought to wait till after you hear some poems and decide whether you actually like the poems or not. I hope I pick some representative samples. Just three quick poems out of this book. And the idea I had was that uh, I was taking some science classes up at Foothill, and I thought that there's no reason why people should think of science as a dry, dull thing. Science is about what really is and how it works. That's pretty exciting. So I wrote 42 poems, put them in this book. Each one of them takes art and science and folds them back together again to create one world of state, too. This first one is about my granddaughter. It's called Family Recipe. Oxygen, 65 parts per hundred. Add her mother's smiling eyes and her father's strong chin. Carbon, 18 parts per hundred. The gift of dance and ear for music. Outside the door, first right Hydrogen, 10 parts per hundred. Add her aunt's curly hair and her uncle's skillful hands. Nitrogen, 3 parts per hundred. The gift of patience and a love of animals. Calcium, 1.5 parts per hundred. Add her grandmother's smooth skin and her grandpa's keen vision. Phosphorus, 1 part per hundred. The gift of rhyming and a sense of humor. The last part in a hundred? A bit of this and a bit of that. 23 chromosomes from each side and a pinch of pure magic. A little random kindness and something special that is hers alone. Mix well in a safe place and keep warm at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit for 42 weeks. And when she's ready, give her food and water, shelter and encouragement, rules and guidance, attention and listening, and all the love So this second one has to do with the origins of the universe as I think they came about. It's called Big Bang. About 14 billion years ago, there was a Big Bang. Something appeared from nothing, and the universe kicked into existence. No one knows where it came from. No one knows how it happened. I don't know what it means or where it's going. A moment ago, I had a thought. Something appeared from nothing, and a whole new thought emerged in my mind. No one knows where it came from. No one knows how it happened. I don't know what it means or where it's going. The true creation, the ingression of novelty, isn't caused. It, it just happens. It happens more often than you think. By studying energy and motion, light and dark matter, we may come to know what the universe is. But why is a more interesting So there's one more here. Moaning wind. Just outside of the roof's edge, the spring wind pushes and shoves over or around, finding its way. Moaning, sighing, weary perhaps of the exchange of pressure and the constant coming and going. The moaning comforts me today, though I remember still a frightened little boy, his head buried beneath the 
covers, ready for the whole house to come down, or the wailing of a banshee at least. The moaning wind play repeated. What I hear is no different than another heard a thousand years ago. And now, here, his blood stands and bears witness to the same play and the same sound. Wind seems wilder in the dark. I can no more stop the wind than halt the passage of time. But sheltered here, snug and dry, I can pause for a moment and take notice of its passing. Ninety-three million miles away, yet close enough to drive the wind here and there. Nearly limitless power, invisible only to be seen when it brushes up against something. Some think the wind is just air. They've missed the point entirely. To cross the vast emptiness of space and give the atmosphere life and force is like the unseen hand of a kindly elder giving our swing a push. Thanks.